Welcome back to the Schmidt Schmatch podcast. Um, it's funny how the shit talk took over from from the uh, the, from the regular. Yeah, the regular podcasts were great, but they just they're not cost effective. Really, the regular podcast got shot on as well by the YouTube, didn't it? Yeah, like, you, YouTube just fucking. It's just <laughs> it just just took over. Yeah, YouTube just absolutely like it just. It just took it away, really. Yeah. Um, and you just don't have the creative capacity. Also, you don't get the analytics, and they're very, very addictive. Well, you do get analytics, analytics for the podcast. Analytics. Hello, what? Analytics for the podcast. But, analytics. Uh, they're, um, like, you know, I won't say who now, because uh, in case we ever interact with them. But, you know, people say stuff like that who aren't Joe Rogan and who are pretty small podcasts are, like, reasonably big, but they're not, yeah. they're not. They're famous, but they're, no, not even famous. They're uh, popular, we'll say, or right. whatever. So they'll say, like, we have tens of millions of downloads and stuff. And it's yeah. like, you definitely don't, like, you no. just, you simply don't. That's, like, podcast metrics, they aren't, they just don't, uh, you have no way of knowing they that. They don't mean sure. anything. They don't mean anything. You have no way of knowing that. There's no, there's no centralized form of information in terms of podcasts. So iTunes don't tell you how many downloads you get. Uh, SoundCloud tells you. Spotify gives you, like, starts and streams. Um there's no centralized location no there's a variety of different apps that will stream for them and while they'll come up in your rss feed it's very hard to distinguish which ones so anyone saying they've you know numbers like that and if they're not joe rogan they're probably lying to you yeah for reasons i would say um just be like i think we're at like uh, we, we've a shitload of downloads i'd say we're probably we're definitely over half a million listens on the podcast when compared to YouTube is is I think well over it's probably close to two and a half million views you know, and we've been the podcast for over four years yeah and that's phenomenal numbers yeah uh, I talked to Seb about this before and he was saying you know he thought he he just you can get to a couple of thousand listens a week you know mm. and then he was like oh I'm just going to get to tens of thousands of listens a week and he's just like it just doesn't <laughs> it work just like doesn't that doesn't happen no podcasts go like it's like muscle fiber recruitment and heavy weights it goes great until ninety percent and then it just tapers off and you don't get any more. <laughs> Yeah. Anyway. Anyway. Gareth's wearing his new flannel and uh and wool. Fleece. Fleece. Uh it's it's uh, it's a faux sheep's wool, is it? or a sheep skin. Yeah. I uh, yeah. super soft. I'm so glad. Very vibey. I look great in flannel, don't I? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'd say if there was a pattern to yeah. suit you it would be flannel. Yeah, just a fucking Yeah. Anyway. Anyway. We're here for the Led to the serious business. The trivia. Yeah. So, for those of you who, no, anyone's listening to Shit Talk, no, we do three trivia questions for the last few weeks, and it's very yeah. enjoyable. Are uh, we, what are we at now? It's like I f- won last week. Did you win last week? Yeah. So, we're one, is it one all? One all. So, what, um, what we love doing is getting one up on each other in general. Yeah. It, it like. Yeah, if we can make the other person look stupid, or no more than the other person, or win something over the other person... In general, it's pretty. We're pretty happy with it. And then at the same time, who's got the most unique form of trivia or knowledge and some random stuff? It's a it's a boon. It's, it's funny because the trivia questions are just like in no real way noble. No, that's the best. <laughs> part <to post. laughs> that's the best part. Of okay, there's one question today that you'll probably get right. Yeah. And fucking hell, there's just it's yeah. so unlikely. Actually, I know for a fact you won't get one of them wrong because yeah. I asked you for the podcast. Right, yeah. uh, okay, as the winner of last week, I'll I'll take it up first, right? And I'll go with the unknowable first. Go on. Um, brass. Mm-hmm. What did you say it was made out of? Copper and zinc. Copper and zinc. Yeah, right, brass is copper and zinc. An alloy of copper and zinc. Yes. Commonly used in bullet casings. All right. What is the property of brass? That makes it so great to use in bullet casings. Is it because it's so malleable? No. Okay, go on. So brass, when introduced to heat, mm-hmm. returns to its original form perfectly every time. Almost no other metal does that so well. Oh, it wasn't far off with the malleability. Yeah. So you can have like an explosion inside in the case. It will expand and mm-hmm. then it will contract immediately and it goes back to its normal size. Whereas for like steel and stuff, you'll start changing some of the compounds within the steel. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then obviously the shape could be slightly altered because of that. That's very interesting. Yeah. I just need, I'm just confirming my answer just to make sure. Um, okay. <clears throat> Question one, Irish history as I'm always uh, As always, yeah. 
in World War One, mm-hmm. a number of Irish men fought in World War One. Yeah. To the nearest uh, ten thousand, and I'll give you plus or minus five thousand. Say, how many fought? How many Irish men fought in World War One? Four thousand. Oh no, sorry, died. Four thousand. No, 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 fought. Just fought. Just fought. Total number. It is around four thousand died, isn't it? Um, in like and stuff. I can I can check that for you while you're thinking. Oh no, as many as oh no, actually, I'll tell you after because it'll give you a hint of what the number could be. How many fought? Yeah. A hundred and fifty thousand. Oh, not bad. Two hundred thousand. Fucking hell, that's a lot, isn't it? Yeah, they think it might a little bit more as well. But fi- nearly 50,000 The crazy thing with that is, like, they've only just been pardoned. Oh, yes. For, uh, yes. Because, obviously, like... No pension. Yeah, anyone who fought in World War One would have been fighting for the crown. Yeah. The tans, mm-hmm. the English. Uh, and they were, for a long, long time, for a hundred years, basically, mm-hmm. um, were persecuted. Yeah, they were given uh, no Irish state pensions. Yeah. Uh, one of my friends grandfathers walked from West Cork to Belfast just followed the train track to yeah. just to sign up so it was a huge point of contention um, so some people in Ireland were like obviously so at the time Ireland was still ruled by the British crown and it was seen as treacherous to join the British army and a lot of people were like no it'll make us look good for uh, in the British eyes if we do help them with World War One. Yeah, it'll make it more favorable to our kind of political pleas. Uh, obviously, that didn't end up mattering, but most people were obviously not in favor. Uh, I think history should look kindly on those people because they made a yeah. huge, huge sacrifice. Uh, given what came after, only you know thirty odd years when World War not thirty odd, a bit more. So Ireland were neutral or non belligerent in World War Two, <laughs> is the political term used. <coughs> Jeez, that's a bad term, isn't it? Yeah. I'd call you belligerent sometimes. <laughs> I would call myself belligerent. Yeah. No, I'd agree with that for sure. I don't take any offence to that. Uh, fully, right. Fully belligerent. Very interesting Irish history question. I'll give you that. Yeah. I, I actually don't have an Irish history question in the bank this yeah. this, this week, right? Go, go on. Uh, okay. The joint that attaches your head mm-hmm. onto your neck mm-hmm. the top of your cervical spine oh I know this one what's it called oh my god um Ocklim something oh. In- interesting note is that when you cut the head off a deer yeah you can you just cut around that joint that you could twist it off you tell me, I don't know. It's a, I know the, the I, Atlas joint. Oh yeah. Oh Atlas. Oh shit, you've the Atlas joint yeah. there. Sorry. What's the name of the hole where your spine goes into the base of the skull? Oh yeah. Does it uh, for that's me? uh sorry, that's what I was trying to think of. No. I knew Atlas joint. Magdala Oblongata or something. Um something some mad Harry Potter name. Fuck. Medulla I'm, Oblongata. Oh, in the base of the skull. They call it the little peach or something. Forum Foramen Magnum. Latin no. for great hole. No, there's a different one than no. that. It's medulla. Um. Anyway, sorry. I'd heard anyway, the, I'd heard of the Atlas anyway. joint, but interesting. So, interesting one. What made you yeah. think of that? I don't know, actually. Oh, actually, I was talking to a certain German stroke South African friend of ours okay. who was talking about shooting things in the Atlas joint. Interesting. <laughs> okay, so another Irish question for you. Okay. Um. It's a question. The, the word is Asquilga, right? Right. Muck Mara yeah. is the Irish for what? I can give you two hints here. Go on. I'm not going to give... Do you know it first? Muck Mara. I know what the two words mean. What do the two words mean? So Muck yeah. is pig. Yeah. And Mara is to kill. No, 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 no. Mara, M-H-A-R-A. M-H-A-R-A. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Muck Mara. Go on, give me the hint. Um... So the first hint is an animal, which you can guess from yeah. being pig. The second hint is it translates to uh, sea pig. Oh, sorry, Mara. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> sea pig. <laughs> <laughs> it's a funny one, and you know. <laughs> Fuck it, hell. Is it seal? No. What? <laughs> what is it? Dolphins. <laughs> 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 I fucking love that. Yeah. That's the best thing about those is like there's 
words in Irish where you'd expect it to be so yeah. glorious and like yeah yeah because they are some of them yeah 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 like if you're yeah. majestic yeah some of them <laughs> some of them are so majestic like some names would be like the fair shoulder or the long neck and stuff yeah 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 whereas yeah. dolphins are f- the fat the sea pigs <laughs> Porpoise then So sea pigs are dolphins And then porpoise Is it porpoise? They are called fat sea pigs So okay. uh, I can't remember What's the Irish word for fat? Um, like lighter or Something like that Yeah so it's like Muckmore or or whatever yeah. So it's fat sea pig for porpoise That's whatever. fucking so funny yeah, So it is hilarious Yeah No I knew that was a good one <laughs> I was thinking you might be able to guess it Seal wasn't a bad guess Yeah 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 I probably would have said seal if uh, if I hadn't known it was it See, was dolphin. dolphin was in my head, but I was like, obviously it wouldn't be dolphin. No, you think dolphin would be really majestic, yeah, yeah, but yeah. It's, it was not. It was no. That's so fucking funny, right? This one, yeah. This is probably my favorite trivia question, right? Yeah. Not so much for the, not so much for the question itself, or whether you know it or not, but for the the bit of a rigmarole afterwards, right? As always. Who was the first man to row across the Atlantic on his own? Uh, I don't know, but can I ask you a question? Was that recently? No. No, I don't know that one. I'm going to give you some hints, right, purely because Do the I hints know are it? very interesting. You might know it, you see. Uh, famously, yeah. he's tried to kill himself mm-hmm. by going into the, the jungle in South America and finding a jaguar. And then as the jaguar was attacking him and mauling him, mm-hmm. he changed his mind and shot and killed the jaguar. <laughs> No, it's not ringing any bells now. Uh, his name is John Fairfax. Nope. Did you ever hear that? Never heard of that now. So he's like the, uh, it's like the actual thing of the world's most interesting man, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, he, he was like a pirate for years. Mm-hmm. He owned like a plantation somewhere. Mm-hmm. He obviously, he lived with like the indigenous in South America for a long time. So it, it turned out when he was a child. His family, he was just like a rambunctious child, you know. Yes. His family had moved to South America for some reason. And I think he actually went, just ran away from home, was just living in the jungle. And he was trapping furs and selling the furs. Do, you know, like the 1900s and stuff. Yeah. The amount of things that happened where they were like, sure, when I was 12, I left. Like, I just left. Yeah. yeah. I went to South... Do you know, but my, in my brain, prior to like the, the advent of industrial aviation, you were just like, sure, no one left the country. No. Or any their own country. But... People did it wholesale. Yeah, wholesale. Yeah, it's it's crazy. Like his his life story is mental. What's his name? John Fair- John Fairfax. Yeah, that sounds like an audiobook. Yeah. Oh, that's an audiobook waiting to happen. I need to go and look for one. This is a, a great question. What is the last capital city in the world that is divided between two countries? And you'll never know it. You'll never guess it. There's just no way you'd even think of this. I'd be so surprised if you knew it. Divided between two countries, capital city. Yeah, you're not going to know it unless you know it. You can won't. You, can you give me a hint? Um, oh, oh, wait, wait, wait. Don't give me a hint. Why? Do you know it? Is it Rome? No. Oh, not bad, not bad. You're close, but not. I thought Rome because you'd have like the Vatican City and the other way they're kind of... Yes. Yeah, go on anyway. That wasn't a bad one. So the cap- Cyprus. So Cyprus is... <laughs> I don't even know what the capital of Cyprus <laughs> I is. I can't think of the capital of Cyprus now either. <laughs> but the capital city in Cyprus is split between uh, Greece and Turkey. So do you know the northern section? Sorry, wait. Yep, yeah, the northern section of Cyprus is uh, owned by Turkey, and the bottom, like one third, is by Greece. And in the middle, then there's the. So the capital city of Cyprus isn't in Cyprus; it's in Turkey. No, no, it's split between. There's a border ring down the middle of it. It's the last split capital in the world. But wait. Uh, you say it's between Cyprus and Turkey, no, not between no, Turkey Greece, and Greece. Greece and Turkey. But what? So there's like the so Cyprus is a country, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it has a capital yes, city. But half of it is uh, is half of it is a Greek territory, and half is a Turkish territory. But then, what part of this Cyprus's capital is in Cyprus? Is it split three ways? I don't. I don't know. You, what are you saying? That You're make, saying half of it belongs to Turkey. The, no, no. Cyprus is their country. Yeah, but it's it's. So r- listen to this. Yeah, right? no, I get what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah, but you're thinking about this too much. No, I'm not. Yeah. You're saying half. It's in Turkey. Cyprus. Cyprus is the island. Yeah. Greece owns half of the island. Turkey owns the other half of the island. But so Cyprus isn't a the country then. Um, Cyprus is just a no. place in Greece. 
NFC? I don't know if it's considered a country. Let's see. No, it must be considered a country if it's... It uh, has to be, if it has a capital. Very tumultuous history, which I never knew about. Really? Recently, yeah. <coughs> uh, so the... Um, As always, another trivia round wrapped by by unknowns Nicos- and unknowables. Nicosia. I'd never heard... I didn't even know it was called Nicosia, but I knew the capital was... Uh, yeah, so it's... Um, so is Cyprus... Wait... Cyprus is a country. But yeah, it's but like so how can the country be half owned by Greece and half by Turkey? So is it a free state? So originally, Cyprus was its own country, and right. there was native Greeks living yeah. there, and then there was I think it was Turkish Ottomans living there. Right. Originally, it was all owned by Greece, as far as I can remember. Or at one stage, they moved towards Greece. Something happened in like this, I think it was like the 50, 60s or 70s. There was a short war. Uh, so mo- a lot of people wanted to be, oh, so it was originally a English territory. Or something to right. So it was a huge, really, really complicated history. Uh, long story short, there's still British forces based on Cyprus. So there's right. like little territories. You go to a British defense forces person That's Cyprus. why he's there, yes. That's why I was wondering. Ah. So he's, yeah, he's, he's on, they're on the island. Sometimes... Um, Long story short, there was like kind of two factions. I'm probably watching this for anyone who's watching from Cyprus, but I think there's a minimal chance there's people watching from Cyprus. Okay, most people are listening, not watching. So there's still like border control. There's a UN line along the middle, or like a no, no man's way. zone. Yeah, so the Turkish forces invaded from the north to defend their citizens or their ethnic citizens or whatever. And then the, the Greece were defending their citizens, the Greeks. Um, so they... Because it was a British territory, the Britain tried to broker stuff. Obviously, fucked it up massively, as they did with all of Shock their horror. as they did with all of their former territories, and they were trying to fix things, you know. Yeah. And so, still to this day, there is a, a border zone manned by the UN. So the UN stepped in, and was like, lads, okay, could be cool. Yeah. Um. So they split it down the middle, not down the middle, but there's a split, and the Kosovo is like half in the Turkish side. Yeah. And then the bottom half is in the Greek side. And there's like border controls. There's still like a no man's zone along the middle. There's like an airport abandoned. And then what? British have like six. that's fucking bizarre. Yeah, still like two million tourists visit every year or something or crazy or whatever like that. Jesus Great. Christ! Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The no man zones are so strange, aren't they? Like remember when we went between mm-hmm. Turkey and Iran? Yeah, they're all <laughs> they're fucked up. <laughs> all of those countries yeah. have those vast one or two mile no man zones. Big huge fucking Just flood fights. Fucking nothing there. There's a thousand wild donkeys as well on the island. Donkeys. Donkeys. Uh, really? Yeah. Christ, that's hilarious. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Donkeys are an animal I've an awful affliction for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're I really. I enjoy spending time around them. They're adorable. Yeah, they're adorable. And the thing I really appreciate is they just don't, they're on their own schedule. Yeah, they don't yeah. give a fuck about you. They love being rubbed, or a lot of donkeys love being rubbed. Yeah. They're very hard worked. Yeah. Very hard worked in other countries, you see. Yeah. Especially in the stands and stuff, like they work them hard. Jeez, like. they work them to the bone. Yeah, it's it's sad to see, especially the donkeys, because their faces are so like, <laughs> they're it's all so expression, EOR from... Uh, uh, What's that from? Winnie the Pooh. Yeah. Winnie the Pooh. Yeah, so that's uh that's Cyprus for you. It's kinda of fucked up when you think about ER, right? So obviously ER was a uh, Manic depressant. No, well besides that, that's kind of like Yeah, yeah. Whatever. ER was obviously a a toy. Mm-hmm. But it was a toy of a donkey. But his tail was pinned onto him. Yeah, but they were all teddies like. I know, yeah, but they're still driving a fucking nail up his arse. Winnie the Pooh. Winnie the Pooh. Yeah. <laughs> And Tigger was hilarious. Yeah, they were yeah. all, you know, in fairness to the cartoons we watched when we were growing up, they were pretty intense. Like Animals of Farting Wood gave me existential dread. What? Animals of Farting Which one was that? You know, when the animals are in the wood and the wood's been chopped down by the giant fucking men in their yes, fucking yeah, wood yeah, machines, yeah. you know, when yeah. they're coming along and just destroying it. That's why everyone have, thinks logging is bad now. Yeah. <laughs> but they were coming along just destroying habitats, you know. Uh, yeah. That, 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 uh, that got me right in there. Right there. Yeah, when you think about um, what was the one Snoopy the dog? Yeah. So theirs was, uh, you know, like solving problems, dealing with your emotions, all that stuff. It was yeah. all very real. Oh, very real. Uh, I loved Snoopy. Yeah, I didn't watch a whole lot of Snoopy, but I remember so much so to the point that when I was like eighteen, mm-hmm. and I was going to, it might have been eighteen or nineteen. Mm-hmm. It was my first freshers' week in college. Anyway, yeah, I went out wearing a Snoopy T-shirt. Was it? Um, was it? Wasn't Halloween? 
no, so no. just meant wearing stupid t-shirts. Stupid t-shirt, yeah. Mad things you I remember. I love that t-shirt. What is your earliest memory? So mine's a funny one. I have thought about this, right? Because yeah. I have a distinct memory of being very, very young and being on like what we used to call a beep beep, which is like your little right. Joe. That's four wheels. You're gonna sit in it when you can't really walk, and your feet go either side. Oh yes, yes. yes. But I remember being out on the driveway in one of them, and fucking reefing myself <laughs> into the back bumper of my aunt's car. And I don't, I don't know, I don't know if that's like an actual memory because I would have been like say two or three then, you mm-hmm. know, max. But like reefing my head off it, or else if that's just like, oh, that was a serious thing that happened, so people gotta remember. Part. I remember getting stu- this is my earliest memory but I remember stuck getting stuck in one of those when I was a little bit too big and then having absolute, <laughs> like a fat pig stuck in one and being like Rah! it wasn't at my house or my, my friend's house was partying, and just being like I gotta get out yeah. <laughs> uh, oh that's hilarious so, what age are you? oh I'd say I was like six or seven like yeah and they're for like toddlers or oh, they're for babies like I was a buster like that's so that's fucking that's funny. The uh, problem, the problem with memories is they're a memory of the last time you remember the memory. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah. So y- you've no idea how subtly you're altering it. No. Do you know what my earliest memory is? I, I thought it, that was your earliest. No, no. Memory. I said that wasn't. That was just okay, a funny okay, story okay, that made okay, me think okay. of it. My earliest memory is when I'm about. I think I'm about three. Right. And my older brother Stephen. So we have a obviously there was always a farm at home. I uh, grew up in a farm, but there wasn't always horses or ponies. And my brother got into horse jumping and hunting and stuff. So he got his first pony. And for anyone wondering, a pony is like thirteen hands or under. Yeah, and so it's a small horse. Small horse. So when people but call ponies, not a baby horse. No, yeah. So when people so. call ponies horses, it's not correct. Um, but you always bother me when I was younger because no one else knew that because they didn't have horses or ponies, you know. So they'd be like, "There's a pony," and I'm like, "That's a horse." But anyway. So it was, uh, we, we Pedan- call it pedantic even at a young age. <laughs> Belligerent and pedantic. <laughs> so you feed, uh, for anyone who doesn't, in Ireland we call it ration. So it's it makes sense because it's just like food you'd feed them, you'd ration yeah, yeah, to them, yeah. you know. So it's, it's nuts or whatever you call them, horse feet. And we had a big trailer full of that uh, next to Star was his name, a wicked cunt of a pony. <laughs> Star was, Star had a white. Is that an equestrian term? Or is that a... No, it's, so, <laughs> it's how I fondly remember him. So he uh, he could still be alive, actually. Ponies live for like 30 or 40 mm. years, you know, depending. So he had a white patch here that looked like a star, but he was not majestic. But anyway, star was uh, in his stable, head out the side. And I was put inside the the ration truck or the ration uh, trailer, you know. It was yeah. full up of ration, so I was just sitting there. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, a faux tie box or like a sandbox, you know. You, yeah. you know, it's like uh, a made-do, like. So dad was feeding. An edible, <laughs> dad, <laughs> edible sandpit. The father went off feeding the rest of the stuff, you know, and doing whatever jobs. And I was just sitting there like, nye, 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 like, prayer away, whatever. So obviously I saw seen people feeding the animals, you know. So obviously yeah. I wanted to feed Star. But if anyone who has ponies or horses knows, you never feed a horse with your fingers bent because no, no. they will bite your fingers. Open palm. And I've been told multiple times to open palm, you know. Yeah. A horse will never bite your finger or pony if you open palm. Yeah. So they don't want to bite your fingers. They don't right? want to bite. Well, Star might have prick. Here we're getting. So I, I fed him like this, you know. Yeah. And just hung down both of my fingers, all four fingers, pacing blood. I was, <laughs> this is my earliest memory. I was so shocked I didn't even cry. I was just like, oh my God, <laughs> this is my blood. And then um, I remember I thought I was bringing, I can remember going down and getting my hands washed and just being like, there was blood everywhere. And uh, yeah, I never fed a horse wrong ever again. So fucking funny. That's my earliest memory. Uh, it definitely happened. Maybe the sequence of events, I'm not sure, but yeah. it, it, it was a thing for sure that happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I must ask my father about it actually. I wonder what he thinks of that. It's just so funny. I never fed a horse wrong after that though. Yeah. You you never would. Fuck no. Jeez, I got bitten on the head as a two year old. I don't remember this name, but you know, you keep getting told, so I feel like I remember it. Yeah. <clears throat> a lovely English setter and it was a, a gun dog belonged to one of my father's friends. Did he have to put it down? Yeah, yeah, but <sighs> I, that's the whole point of the story is like Yeah. Every time he still brings it up. Jeez, that was the best setter I ever had. Who's that? Is that yeah, G- yeah. J T. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So like literally every time like Jeez, that setter was something else. Were you antagonizing him? No, I was a two-year-old. I think I had been up on the couch You're a cunt and got down right? onto the floor. Yeah. And then the dog got up on the couch and obviously they told the dog to get down. Mm-hmm. And it just pissed the dog off, you know. Yeah, fuck. You just never know with dogs. Yeah, that's the problem, isn't it? Yeah. Jeez, you're some cunt. That was your fault now. Oh, no, absolutely. You're entirely responsible for that. <laughs> uh, fuck, I thought of something there now. Why are we... 
Hey, you're going to buy a deep freeze today, are you? No, I thought of something else before that. Jesus, you said something there that made me think of something. God damn it, I can't remember now. No, yeah, I must buy a freezer for the old... The... The stag. The... The old stag. The stag. Yeah. Har- we harvested last weekend. Harvested. Shot. Murdered. Whatever you want to call it, really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Last weekend, Fab- fabulous set of horns. I'll be going up. Yeah. So we we have a new spot, hopefully, for our studio. Yeah. And uh, more space. <laughs> the fellow who owns the spot doesn't know it yet. <laughs> he doesn't know. <laughs> it's the other side of the office wall. So there's just a, a big spare room there. So we're going to do... Our main problem with this studio is our depth is very off. So if you'll watch most like YouTubers who are in a studio, you'll see that there is a huge distance between their background and their lens will have a certain focal point. It'll be like set where they are, where you are, and then the back be kind of blurred out, but it looks super bougie. Yeah. So some people do like bookshelves and stuff. So we're going to go with like stripper poles and uh, horns and stuff. Yeah, yeah. You know, Hardens. Hardens. <laughs> Skulls. <laughs> Chains. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so it'll probably look pretty similar to what the background is now. Just it will be a much better setup. I'm I'm really trying to think of what I was going to say because it's around. Fuck it anyway. I can't remember what I was going to say. Um. Yeah, we're uh, we're going haunting an old barn today. We're going back to uh, your gym. Yeah, do the old gym. How do you feel about when you think about your gym? What I fucking mean? love it. Are you? Yeah, I love going back there. You're a very positive parting. Yeah, 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 yeah. I li- uh, that was down to Teddy as well, like Joe. Yeah. She said it, it just worked very, very well. I don't know anyone else who's gotten out of gyms as safely and as well off as you have. I just do not know of anyone or I know anyone personally who got out of a gym like you did. Yeah. It's only ends in tears or it's still going. Yeah. I don't yeah, know anyone yeah, else yeah. who's just gotten out and they're like, yeah, that was perfect. Man. Yeah. I, that was really beneficial for me. Yeah. Like you came out with an experience um money good friends uh, oh great friends like that group who are down there now like sure like we'll still go on the lash together like joe great like very a very very good group of people like yeah there's literally no there's no bad thing from like you want to leave you got what you you didn't spend too long with it you put a lot of hard work in to be fair but you and teddy did of course yeah and uh i can't think of anyone else do you know anyone else no literally nobody but uh, yeah, we're going to go down today. We're probably going to shoot our, our movement library down there as well. At some point, yeah. At some point. We just need to, to put away a weekend. Yeah, and, and the list of movements. Yeah. But yeah, that's that's all that's happening on this side. A lovely morning this morning. Bit yeah. of mist early on, but yeah, uh, lovely clear November morning. And uh, tomorrow we're going ranging the country for four-legged. Four-legged nummy things. Cloven hoops. Uh, <laughs> We have a phenomenal guest about to come on the podcast oh, as well. so fucking We're excited. going to, uh, I don't know, should we tell you now? But we, uh, one of my favorite YouTube channels for for shooting, mm-hmm. for so like competition long range shooting where you're kind of running from stage to stage, you're shooting off all different kind of obstacles. It's pretty long. I think the guys go out there around a thousand meters in NRL. Like, very very entertaining sport mm. so we have a professional shooter from that realm who mm. also has a youtube channel he's into hunting and, and some other stuff and we're we're going to try and chat to him next week about some possible collaborations get him on the podcast chat to him about like what he does for his training he's in great shape mm-hmm. great nick very very good nick yeah um yeah exciting times I think um, I think that might be it, is it? Yeah. How long have we... Thanks very much for watching or listening or whatever you did. If you like the old YouTube uh, the old YouTube setup, mm-hmm. do let us know because we know you're over there in the corner watching. But uh, yeah. We got a new camera, you see. So there was originally on the Sonys, there was a limit to how long you could record for. <laughs> yeah. And it was the bane of our lives. And then there's a new series of cameras came out. And the limit was because if there was a beyond a certain limit... If a camera had a certain recording capacity, it was considered a video camera. Video camera, yeah. And then it had different taxes on it. It's like that. Um, and so Sony didn't do that. They put that limit on it. But then the new series, they took it off because I think it was just annoying so many people. Yeah. Uh, it's like the Jeff cake. Was it a biscuit or a cake? And there was different taxes in Ireland. And oh, it. You, this would have been a great trivia. Trivia we question. We both know this one now, I think. How you technically class it as a cake or a biscuit? Oh, how was it classified? So... The I think it was the customs excise in the UK classified it a cake or a biscuit as 
a biscuit being something that once it goes off, mm -hmm. it goes soft. Mm -hmm. And a cake, when it goes off, it goes hard. Oh, yeah. That's very interesting. Yeah. Very interesting, yeah. And remember, yeah, and there was different taxes on it. And they won, didn't they? They won, I think, yeah. Yeah. They, um, that's mad, those tax things. Yeah. But there's literally millions at stake in these... Uh, billions at stake. Billions at these stakes. Thing. Do you know what, though? I have uh, maybe controversial opinion here, but... The uh, off-brand Jaff cakes are better than the original. No, that's not. Yeah. It's not right. It's not right. Yep. No. And do you know why? Because in the off-brand ones, the cake part of it, the the the, the doughy cakey the bit, cakey bit, yeah, is much more moister and less dry no. and fluffy. No, I hate it's the dry not. And fluffy. No, no, no. You're wrong on that. Nope. The McVitie's original is the that's the Jaffa cake, like the proper Jaffa cake. In a royal blue packet yeah. with nice, vibrant, bright orange lettering. Remember their advertising? It was like full moon, half moon. Total eclipse. Yeah. <laughs> you know, um, I, I just want one that you can fit into your mouth in one go. Like, who nibbles? Like, do people nibble Jaffa cakes? No. And obviously no. you eat the whole tube as soon as you open them, like... Yeah. Obviously, like... <laughs> do you know what are shit? Oreos are shit as well. No, Fucking hell, your opinions are so wrong today. They're just not great, like overrated. What? I love Oreos. Overrated. Think, Jeez, if there's no. a flavor milkshake I like, yeah, it's Oreo. Think about next time when you're eating Oreo. Think about the flavor it's in your no, mouth. No, I like it. And you'll notice I the like absence it. of flavor. You're you'll notice. Fucking hell. You'll notice nothing Jesus in your mouth. Christ, did you bang your head on the way to work this morning? No. I'm not. I'm, I'm no I've been clearer than I've ever been, Dara. No. <laughs> I see things very clearly right now. No, Jesus Christ, doesn't right. like Oreos. Very fucking go. Jeff. Thanks, guys.